Hello, I'm Reza Rat from Radacat. Happy New Year. In this video, I'm going to talk about Power BI licensing, a full guide about Power BI licensing with anything updated up until January 2023, which I'm recording this video. So let's get into that. Uh, Power BI licensing had changed a lot during um, some years. So let's go and talk about these. The first thing you need to know about Power BI licensing is that there are two types of license. One is a user-based license, another is capacity-based license. User-based license are licenses that you pay per user, usually per month. Like for example, you have five users, you pay for each of those on a monthly basis. And capacity-based licensing is uh, is different. You purchase a capacity, a dedicated capacity, which then you can assign multiple users to it um, and you pay for that capacity. But with that capacity, sometimes you also need to have user-based licensing as well. Like for example, with premium capacity license, uh, you might also uh, you would also need to have some pro Power BI Pro licenses. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. There is also one other type of licensing which is not user-based or capacity-based. It is designed for on-premises licensing, which I'm going to talk about these. Um, so before talking about these options of user-based and capacity-based, let's talk about the fact that um, why do you really need a license? Let's start with Power BI Desktop. So Power BI Desktop is a tool that you can use as a report authoring tool, as a report development tool. You can um, download it for free. You can actually go to Microsoft website, download the Power BI Desktop for free. You can either download it from the Microsoft Store app in the Windows 10 or Windows 11, or you can just download it from a link and install it on your Windows machine. Uh, and you can update it on a frequently basis. You don't need an account. Uh, you don't need a Power BI account to use Power BI Desktop. When you open it the first time, it pops up with a message saying that log into Power BI, but you can skip that part. You can still use Power BI Desktop uh, with most of the functions that would help you to develop a Power BI report. You can build the data model, you can connect to the data sources, write calculations, create relationships, create visualizations. You can pretty much do anything you want in developing your Power BI uh, report and analytics and then use it like that. You don't have to pay anything, you don't have to create an account to use that. So then the question comes with this is that, well, if it is all free, then why should I get a license for Power BI? Because it is all free. I don't really need a license. So that comes to some factors. When you create the Power BI um, file, or let's say Power BI report, um, we save it as a PBIX file in Power BI desktop. But then what do you do with that report? Um, if it is just a report for yourself, then probably Power BI Desktop is enough for you. You don't have to pay for any licenses, but usually you want to share it with others. Uh, so when you share it with others, uh, how you are going to share it? For example, you might say, well, I have this PBIX file. I'm going to send this PBIX file to others in my organization. So then they also need to have a version of Power BI Desktop installed on their machine. The first problem with that is that um, not every machine is capable of having Power BI Desktop installed on it. For example, they might have an um, iPad. They might have a, um, their phone. Right in in a phone, you cannot install Power BI Desktop. Right, uh, even if you can install it on some of the applications uh, on some of the OSs, Power BI Desktop is a developer tool. It doesn't mean to be for end user because when end user open Power BI Desktop, it gives them a lot of functionality, a lot of flexibility. They can go and uh, edit a calculation. They might go and delete a visualization and they don't really know what they are doing because they have not been trained for Power BI. So they go and make any changes they want. Uh, and this will cause some problems. The report wouldn't work. The uh, numbers that you are showing on your report would not be the same numbers that it's supposed to show. And then they come to you and blame you for your report not working, right? So that's one of the side effects of too much 
power for the user in addition to the fact that you cannot install PowerPI Desktop everywhere. Uh, another thing is that if you start building everything in one Power BI Desktop file, um, you are stepping away from best recommendations of multi-layered architecture in Power BI environment, which is considering data flows, shared data sets, uh, and then the visualization connection to that. I have another video explaining about that process, that what is the best practice of this designing a multi-layer architecture for Power BI solutions so that you can reuse some of the work that you have done. If you do everything in one Power BI desktop file, you are not using that. So you are end up with a bad practice. You will have silos of Power BI desktop files. And these versions of Power BI desktop files will be all around your organizations. Everyone will be working with one version of Power BI desktop file. And they don't know, is it the updated version or not? There are some other challenges. For example, you cannot put much security around it. It's a PBIX file. Everyone can send it outside of the organization. You cannot track and monitor the usage of that uh, PBIX file. Like people just share it together and they see it. You don't really know how many times this report has been opened. So there are a lot of challenges. These are just few of those. So we shouldn't really share the PBIX file um, as a Power BI desktop uh, sharing solution. So sharing should be done differently, should be done through a, um, a hosting platform. Power BI has two hosting options. One of them is Power BI service, which is the cloud-based hosting option for Power BI. I explained about that in a video. Another one is Power BI report server, which is on-premises hosting for Power BI, which I explained that also in another video. So that is when the licensing of Power BI comes in. You want to use one of those hosting solutions. Uh, most of these licensing I'm talking about, they are focusing on the cloud-based uh, hosting option for Power BI, but some of them are also including the on-premises as well. So now let's talk about user-based licensing. So user-based licensing in Power BI, we have three types of user-based licensing. It starts with free, then Pro has some additional features on that. And PPU or premium per user has pretty much all the features that you need uh, as a user-based license. Uh, if you have a free account, what does that mean? So free account means that you have to go and create a Power BI account for yourself. This can be done by you if it is allowed in your organization to have a, to create a free account or the Office 365 or Power BI administrator in your organization can assign a free Power BI license for you. Uh, with the free, of course, you have Power BI Desktop that is absolutely free to use, but you also now can log into the Power BI service. You have a 10 gigabyte space in Power BI service that you can use. Each of your files cannot be more than one gigabyte when you publish it, but you can still publish um, a file with up to one gigabyte size into the Power BI service. You can go and see it in a web browser, so you don't need to have uh, your laptop with Power BI Desktop anywhere in any meeting to see it. You can just log into Power BI website with your account and see it with any browser. Um, um, and, and it gives you all of these functionalities, simple functionalities for free. Uh, but you cannot share that file with anyone. For example, if I create a Power BI file, if I want to share it with someone else, free does not give me that option. Um, before I talk about the other options, there is a option called Power BI um, published to web. Uh, it's a free way of sharing Power BI content with anyone. I'm not going to talk about that in this video because that is um, not a secure way of sharing. It's not good for confidential data. It is good for public data. If you use that method of sharing, you are exposing your data to public internet. Um, I have a video about that, so go and check that out. I'm talking about the methods of sharing that are secure. So the next level of licensing for per user based licensing is pro. Pro user license at the moment, at the time of creating this video, cost 9.99 uh, 9 US dollar per user per month. So what this will give you, of course, you have all the free options of Power BI uh, account, plus you have some other options as well. These options are usually designed around sharing. Now you can share your Power BI content with someone else. You can create a workspace, which is like an environment that you build your Power BI 
content in it. Um, and it also gives you some um, development features in Power BI, for example, the incremental refresh, analyzing Excel, data flows, some of the basic features of that, paginated reports. Uh, all of these are included in Pro, but not in uh, Power BI free account. So Pro basically is designed for a developer. It is designed for situations that you want to um, build more inside the Power BI uh, service features. For example, Power BI data flow, which is an object you cannot create in Power BI desktop, can be created in the Power BI website if you have a Power BI Pro account. One of the things, however, you need to consider is that uh, you can use Pro for sharing, but if I share a report, I have a Pro account, I share a report with five other users in my organizations, they also need to have a paid Power BI subscription, which can be Pro or Premium per user, unless I'm using one of the capacity-based options, which I'm going to talk about. So if you have Pro and you are sharing the content with someone else, they also need to be part of a paid subscription. Uh, that is a key important point to understand here. You do not need Pro just for one person who is sharing, but you also need it for those who are also using the content. Uh, so as I said, Pro is designed for developers. It has all the developer functionalities, but there are a few other options that are not included in Pro. They are like more like higher level options that uh, there's one level of um, licensing added that can cover those. Now that is called premium per user or PPU in short. This is the most um, recent licensing option for Power BI. This gives you some additional features. For example, with Pro, your model size, your PBIX file size when you publish it to the Power BI website cannot exceed more than one gigabyte. With PPU, it can be up to 100 gigabyte. Uh, with Pro, you can refresh your uh, file up to eight times a day. With PPU or premium per user, you can refresh 48 times a day and unlimited REST API refresh. There are some AI functionalities, functionalities that uses um, in Power BI websites, such as data flows, calling Azure Cognitive Services. These are included in premium per user. Um, some advanced features in data flow, such as computed entity, enhanced compute engine, or the data mart that is uh, recently announced. Uh, these are all included in premium per user. So premium per user will give you more options. You are actually using Power BI in full feature using this option. The reason that premium per user actually announced by Microsoft is that uh, those organizations who don't have much of a user base, like they have a small um, base of users or medium scale of users, let's say they have like 40 users, 50 users, they can still use Power BI full function. They have all of these functionalities that they can use. Uh, at the moment of creating this video, again, premium per user or PPU costs 20 US dollar per user per month, but I would highly recommend it if your user base is not large. Uh, if you have 10 users, 20 users, 50 users, even if you have 100 users, this might be an option to, to consider because uh, this gives you a lot of functionality uh, which you can use. Consider Pro, uh, uh, Pro Plus equals PPU. This is how we call it. Now, what if you have too many users, you have like thousands of users, then for those situations, we have other licensing options, which are capacity based. So capacity based licensing are usually targeting the large user base. Now, depending on what you want, as a features, there are two types of licensing in this category. One of them is called embedded, another is premium. As you see in this diagram showing, um, embedded is also included in premium. So if you purchase premium, you have embedded included, but if you just purchase embedded, then you don't get the premium, you just get that embedded part. Uh, also embedded is uh, cheaper than premium. So let's first talk about what is embedded. Assume this scenario, let's say I'm working in an organization, we already have a web application that we use uh, for interacting with our user base. These users might be internal, external. Um, I have already all the users set up in there. They have their own user account, passwords, things like that. They log into that web portal and see their own, um, let's say information, documentation, anything like that. And I want to use that same web application or portal to share the Power BI uh, report. 
So the Power BI report to be embedded inside that application so that they can see it. I don't want each of those to have a Power BI account for themselves. Um, that would be a lot of hassle because I already have user base for them. I already have the user management. So why should I go and create a user account for each of those? On the other hand side, I'm not really using the Power BI service features such as Power BI app or anything like that. So I just want to share this report. They just see this report. I would be able to still use the usage metrics and things like that on my report, but um, I'm not using much of a Power BI service functionality. In a scenario like this, I can use Power BI embedded licensing. Power BI embedded licensing will give me ability to embed dashboard, report, uh, any of these inside my applications, and it can end up being much cheaper. It is a dedicated capacity that I'm using, but the dedicated capacity node specification can be uh, adjusted, like what node you want. This is the pricing of, um, of embedded US dollar, again, at the time of creating this video, which might change in the future. Uh, as you see, we have different nodes, A1 to A8, which those are going to a very high level uh, configuration. This is hourly based pricing. That is one of the really good thing about embedded licensing is that, for example, I can use this to share a report with a group of people, let's say 100 people in my organization, uh, and I can put it on a A2 license, uh, on an A2 node. And on the, let's say, at the beginning of the month, when there are a lot of, let's say, requests for people to come and see these reports, I even scale it up to A3. So they see it in a much faster result. And during the month when they are not really using it that much, I scale it down to A1. So I'm paying less. Or if my user base, they are all based in a certain geographical area in a certain time zone. For example, they are all in uh, east to west US, that time zone. So I can turn it off during the night time so that this is not running. So I'm not really paying for that. So this can be really cheaper if I want to. Uh, these are really good specifications of embedded. You can turn it off, you can turn it on, you can scale it up or down. It can become much, much cheaper than PPU or sometimes even cheaper than Pro. If I have, let's say, 200 users and I put it on an A2 and it is only up for, let's say, 10 hours a day, um, I can get a really cheap option out of this rather than paying it uh, for a per user basis. Uh, but there are two things you need to consider. One is that you need a web developer to do this because um, embedding, that embedding that into your application comes with a lot of the configurations and things like that. Later on, you might need some um, um, customization. So you need to have a web developer. Consider that cost. Also consider the cost of uh, running your custom web application. It should be hosted somewhere and things like that. So usually this is helpful for situations that a company has already a web developer in place. They have a web application in place and they just want to use this. Uh, the next option uh, is Power BI Premium capacity based. So this is like uh, Power BI Premium per user, but this has more options. So this is capacity based. You purchase a dedicated capacity. When we use user-based licensing, we are using a shared uh, capacity, shared resources such as CPU memory. But when we get a premium or embedded licensing, we are getting a dedicated capacity and you choose what capacity level you want. For example, a P1 node of premium gives you a certain core of CPU, a certain memory to work with. Um, you still would need some uh, user-based licensing. For example, you still need pro licenses because they uh, need to be there to uh, work with the workspace. A pro license is needed to be part of a workspace to set up deployment pipelines and things like that. But the deployment pipeline feature itself is a premium feature. So it works with combination of per user license, but per user is only needed for your developers, which is probably not a big, team. So imagine if I have a 10,000 uh, users organization for my Power BI reports, I might have only a group of 30 uh, developers. For those developers, I 
purchase a pro license and then I purchase premium capacity depending on the configuration and requirement and things like that. I see what node I would require, P1, P2, P3, whatever it is. Uh, and the combination of those would create the licensing that I would need. That is how this would work. Now, the really important thing about premium capacity, which we don't have it in premium per user, is that premium per user, you have to pay per user. So if you have like 20 users, that makes sense. But if you have 10,000 users paying premium per user or even pro, it is not um, making sense at all paying like this much amount. Uh, what you can do instead is that when you have a premium capacity, you can assign your workspace to be part of this premium capacity, then create an app on top of that workspace, which I have explained all of these in another video, how to do that. Um, and users of that app can be Power BI free accounts in your organization. So you can have unlimited Power BI free accounts using the app that is connected to a Power BI content in a workspace that is premium capacity. So then you don't have to pay per user for your 10,000 user base. You just need to pay for that capacity, plus those pro users, of course. Uh, but in terms of like how many, uh, like what node of premium you need, that is something you should um, try different specifications, requirements, and see what node would work. So premium uh, is like PPU pretty much. Uh, plus um, that sharing option, which is the most critical option for that. Also, it gives you a couple of more options as well. You have larger data sets option. With PPU, you had 100 gigabyte size of PBIX file. With premium capacity, you can go up to 400 gigabyte. But consider that is only available if you go to the highest level of um, node in PPU, which is P5, which costs quite a bit, actually. Um, and Auto scale is also another thing in premium capacity, which you can pay additional costs and it's a scale up for certain peak periods uh, and then you can scale it back there. Uh, this is the premium pricing as of now and premium pricing are those nodes starting from P1 to P5, as you see in here uh, in this list. Uh, the P1 node is 8 core CPU, which part of it is back end, part of it is front end, 25 gigabyte memory. It's not a really big machine if you want to compare it with a laptop, for example. So that is why we have other nodes. And you see the P5, the last record here, is the one that gives you 500 gigabyte memory size for your Power BI dataset. But for, uh, 400 gigabyte mm, memory size for uh, Power BI dataset is huge because Power BI datasets are compressed by default. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the difference between A SKUs and P or EM SKUs. If you look at this table and, and look more details on these capacity settings, you see that we have EM1, EM2, EM3, and then P1 all the way to P5. On the other hand side, we have A1 all the way to A8. So there are different types of SKU licensing here. What is their differences? So we have A SKUs, which goes from one to eight, EM one to three, and P one to five. So A SKUs are more like Azure-based SKUs where, uh, versus P or EM SKUs are based on Office 365. Uh, ASKUs are mainly uh, used for situations that I explained in that embedded, for example, when I when you want to pay on an hourly basis so that it becomes cheaper, turn it off over the nights or scale it up, let's say, uh, at peak times, scale it down when users are not using it that much, things like that. You don't want users to have their own accounts. You are using your own user management in your application. ASKU is great for that. EMSKU is also embedded, but EMSKU give you uh, a few more options. For example, one of the options you get with EMSKUs is that in addition to do doing those, you can also have Power BI accounts for the users. So they can actually log into Power BI. You can use features such as Power BI Secure Embed, which is kind of an embedding, but not that complex embedding that you need a web developer. It comes with a simple um, iframe you can add into a web page, but users need to log in. Uh, so EM and ASKUs, they both can be considered as embedded, 
but EM is something you pay on a monthly basis. You cannot turn it off overnight versus ASKUs, you can turn it off on an hourly basis. So I would say ASKUs is more developer oriented. EM SKUs is more like a simplified version of that. And PSKU is of course the premium option, which, uh, which you can uh, get all those premium functionalities with it. Uh, the last type of license, this is only for Power BI on-premises. It does not work in the Power BI service. It is when you get a SQL Server Enterprise license plus software assurance. With that, you will have Power BI Report Server included. Power BI Report Server is on-premises hosting option for Power BI. Now, this license itself is not cheap. But if you already have that license for your data warehouse team, for your database team, then it can become a Power BI report server at the cost of nothing because uh, it is included in that, right? Uh, also remember that Power BI report server is also included in Power BI premium capacity licensing as well. But this license itself is only for Power BI report server, nothing in the Power BI website. So as a summary of all of these, uh, this table explains them all. Power BI Free basically gives you the Power BI Desktop, the Power BI Service, ability to publish your own reports, see it yourself, not a sharing. Power BI Pro will give you sharing plus some development features. Um, the workspace, usage of workspace, incremental refresh, paginated reports, some of the functions of data flows but not fully featured. Power BI Premium per user or PPU will give you a little bit extra. It gives you additional features in data flow, AI functions, data marts. Uh, so basically you are using full features of Power BI uh, with PPU. Your model size can be up to 100 gigabyte, 48 times refresh a day unlimited REST API calls refresh and 100 terabytes of capacity, of course. Then we have Power BI embedded capacities, which can come in ASKUs or EMSKUs. I explained about those. Those are good for situations that you want to embed a Power BI inside the custom application and Power BI premium capacity, which is the highest level of premium you can get. But remember that in addition to that, you also need to get um, some pro licenses for your developers. But the premium capacity now will give you option to share it with free users, which can be as many as users you want. Of course, your capacity should be able to handle that load of the users. And finally, we have SQL Server Enterprise Licensing plus Software Assurance, which gives you Power BI Report Server or on-premises report of Power BI. I hope this video helped you to understand how the licensing in Power BI works, uh, how uh, how you can choose the best licensing in Power BI. I do a lot of consulting and training on Power BI. So if you have any questions in Power BI, reach out to our team at Radicad. We would be more than happy to help. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you. Bye.